Hello! It's a new episode of Let's Linux. We continue the Poison series. And now we are at the Polypoison part. And of course, we're gonna add uh, X resources styling to our polybar. Let's open up Sublime here. Right now we have uh, a groove box colors here uh, in, um, in the window decorations. Now I got groove box in 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 my Sublime. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Polybar. It's almost the same approach as as with. Uh, i3 but the polybar is much more advanced uh, styling settings in itself so so it's a bit different um, here is how you load a uh, uh, x resource value in polybar ah god damn yo There. Never mind. I I was renaming folders and stuff here. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Let's open up the polybar config. We have it here. <coughs> and actually, there are some clues here in 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 the default. The I haven't uh, added this. Uh, this is how how you add um, XRDB values to polybar. Right now, the background of Polybar is uh, is this. If we change it to red, it becomes red. But if we change it to XRDB, and then just like um, uh, I three, this is how you write it. Dollar uh, curly brackets xrdb colon then the resource name. So here we could write bud style accent, and then you uh, ju uh, just like i3 add a default value. You see, it's an accent. It's the same color as we had here. So that's basically how easy it is here. And we could, of course, um, do the same with the um, foreground color here. FG1, I don't remember if it's FG1 or FG, no, it's FG2 is the nice white. Uh, but, to add, and uh, we will look uh, into this a bit more uh, soon, how this uh, really works. But I'm sad to say that there is no perfect way to load fonts in, in Polybar. Because fonts are defined like this, with a list. The zero font it is the first font that Polybar looks for. If it can't find, if nothing, uh, you you can specify to always use uh, font number two for for uh, yeah this volume label for example. But most of the time, at least in the default uh, settings here, uh, it always looks at font zero first. If it can't find this fixed font, then it tries to use Unifont and uh, lastly CG font. And you define it uh, just like in, uh, th this is the same, um, yeah, it's even more clear here. It's uh, it's the same syntax as in um, X resources. Uh, if you remember from URXVT here, we have the font defined like this. It, it, it's the same syntax, but without the XFT colon here. Um, and then you put a semicolon. And this is the, yeah, it, it, it's easiest. 
easiest if I just change this. Now it's one. If I change this to four, it will bump the text four pixels down like this. So you see now it uh, it's almost at the bottom of of the bar. So you you set the vertical spacing of the text, and and this can be good to fine tune this because uh, different fonts might appear at at different heights, so to speak. Um, the problem is, uh, let's set this to one again, duplicate this, comment this out. And then we have this at font one, if I'm not mistaken, and then we can have mono space as the default value. Let's see if it works. Yeah, you see it, it, it loads, it's, it's good. But we cannot add any more styling than this. We cannot add this uh, colon here, then, then it freaks out. So you can only... Yeah, you see, you, you, you cannot add values after uh, you have called a, a variable like this. And I, I have really tried to, to make this work, but I can't. And it might look okay here. It almost is... Maybe it even is good this, so you could use this, but um, I often find myself wanting to tweak either this value and I also really want the anti-alias to false and stuff for, for the font and you cannot set the size either. Now this particular fixed fixed sys that I use here, it only have one size, it, it, it always uh, defaults to this size. Mm. So either either you just live with not being able to, to change the, the appearance or you have to hard code it like uh, and then we could actually uh, use this because it's almost the same and comment this guy out also. But I think the font is uh, a thing that you, you, you would change much uh, less often than uh, the colors, so it's not like super big deal. Font format, true type, don't care about that, size 12, anti-alias, false. See if there is any difference. I don't know, I can't, cannot barely see it. But now at least we can change the height here if we want to do. Yeah, now it, it's it, it's very hard to see, but I, I think it just looks a little bit better. So that's basically how you do it in a, a polybar. But Polybar has so many uh, settings you can do to, to style things. You can add like these underlying things uh, and you can add different colors and, and by default uh, it has like a lot of different colors here. Um, my preference is to, to remove all these underlines. I, I just think it's noisy. It's better to have... Um, just one background color, one foreground color, and then if I want to highlight something, then I just use uh, the background, uh, like uh, we, we can see here. And th this is how, how this works also. This section here, colors, we could just we could make our own section. Uh, we can call it uh, xres for x resources, for example. And in X resources, and here you can have duplicate. We, we can have a background variable here, even if we have one in the go colors here. It doesn't matter because it's different sections. And then we could have this uh, to uh, BG1 instead. Can save here, nothing will change. If I wanted to use this Xres here now, let's change uh, the color of um, the clock here, for example, to, to uh, our BG color. 
Xres background. Then we find this date module somewhere. I know it somewhere. I know it. I know it. I know it somewhere. Here it is. A format underground prefix. This only sets the prefix color. So, and, and the prefix is uh, like if I would write here a a a. Then you see we have a prefix to to the module, and almost all modules you can add this uh, prefixes to. And the prefix has this color set to it. If we wanted to use our one, he here you can see how it works. Colors, that's the section name. Remember there was a section. Our section is named Xres and the value is from background. And then we get this. And I actually think this is enough. Just a background, a foreground, and then I use this uh, background background color when I want to highlight something for now example this is red I rather have it like this background and then it pops out and it, I, I think it looks even better with the um, solarized uh, I don't know better I, I have gotten really used to this solarized style ah, and now we should also add um, uh, so that um, polybar uh, reloads when uh, with our reloader script uh, open uh, scripts reloader and I think the ver the, the command for that is uh, polybar dash is it message cmd restart maybe let's try this and restart now yeah now it restarts i3 it reads restarts uh, uh, polybar and as you can see it, it switched here from solarize to gearbox if i switch again it reloads everything so this this is like the power and the big advantage of, of keeping everything even if, I, I know it looks like a really weird setup with these files going all, all over but when you're done you you basically just comment out themes like this and maybe change the font here and then it changes well now it doesn't change in in polybar but i i will file an issue about this uh, variable nesting thing uh, in, in polybar uh, try to get a hold of Jagger uh, and see if, if it can be fixed, but it, because it, it, it should be easy. Mm. Another thing, I don't know, maybe I have to make a separate video about that because uh, then it gets a bit more complex. But it's not super hard, but we could make a video. You, uh, I don't know if you remembered when I demoed my, uh, my version of this... Uh, toggle title thing I have a color script that shows all the 16 colors and I have made that in, in pure polybar I just use uh, background color in polybar to, to, to make that color script and, and then being able to right click the colors and get the color variables I think we, we will make a video about that because there we can also see how to get this uh, X resources values you can fetch them from anywhere uh, by using this query, you know, uh, xrdb query. With some awk magic, we can easily fetch the, the, the values from here and create something like a color script or, or use this uh, from within the script. Because remember, we colorize this text. Now we don't do that really, uh, but uh, we colorize the text with um, within a script and that doesn't read from the polybar config so then we have to find an, uh, an alternative way to colorize things from there and I think that will be the next video I don't know 
Shall we make a recap on, on, on uh, polybar here? And then you just have to dig into this uh, uh, the setup of, of polybar because it's it, in my opinion, it, it's cool that you can do so many things, but it's just uh, it, it's just noisy to have the, these many colors. Uh, and I will probably make a video also where I I configure the bar the way I want it. But before that, I want to make a, a, a Rofi video. Uh, you will see why. But maybe we make a break here and then uh, in the next video we do something cool instead of this just uh, moving dot files values and create this color script in, in our uh, flexible title here or what to call it. But you can define your own um, things like this. Just a value, this simple syntax, it's, uh, yeah, I think you get it. And this is how you sync uh, colors. And this X resources, it works with uh, Rofi, it works with a lot of other applications. I actually try to find applications that uh, uh, get the variables from X resources, so as much as possible uh, get fetched from there. Uh, I say thank you for watching and in the next video we will create a really cool color script here. Okay. Okay, okay. Choo.